Right, this is a video I was not going to make and you can't see my face because I'm, I'm up here and I don't care because you don't want to see my face. Anyway, this is a video I wasn't going to make because I didn't think there was any need. I like to make videos that uh, are useful to people and if I can't find the information anywhere else, in other words, if nobody else has made the video, then I'll make one. And that's what I found with this. This is my Warco 280 VF which is 2012. It's one of the better financial decisions I made. I bought this for my retirement 10 years ago and I've just retired. So um, it didn't come out of my retirement fund. Now, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a qualified engineer or anything like that. So I'm purely amateur and I've had it for 10 years and I've just done some turning on it. I did some steel turning and then I did some copper turning and they were both not very good. And I always assumed it's my lack of experience and, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm basically saying I'm not blaming at all, but copper, steel. And I thought, actually, maybe there is something. Uh, and I realized it's 10 years old and I've not abused it. It's not been misused, but I have failed to maintain it as well as I should have done. And I admit that. And when it all comes to, and obviously I was struggling with parting off, but I know I assumed everybody struggles with parting off. But what I've actually found is that uh, a couple of the gib screws were loose. And I assumed it was done from new, which it was done from new, and it was perfect when it was new. But I assumed that I, well, I suppose I was too scared to touch them, or, or I thought I wasn't qualified to touch them. So anyway, found, having found that out, I thought I'll refurbish the whole machine and it's all there on YouTube. So I started to do that and there's plenty on YouTube. All these machines are very similar. But I've come across a problem that I can't find on YouTube. So I thought, well, while I do it, I'll film it and it might be of use to somebody else. It's peculiar to this 280 VF and it's the head bearings in here. And I'll show you what it is. First of all, this is hanging down for a reason. It's I've got a, a, just one of the bolts I've put back in. That is basically to stop it hanging down on its wiring. Uh, there's a sensor in there. There is, honestly. There's a sensor in there which is uh, picks up a blade which is on the shaft. Um, and if you don't remove the sensor, then you basically you can knacker the uh, sensor so i've took that off and then i've just literally put that there so that it's not hanging on the wiring for ages but the problem is this so far uh the main bearings obviously on the shaft there now there's a bearing there there's a bearing there uh the gear there which i've released the drive gears from it anyway uh on here this is on the end of its Thing. there's a couple of uh, screws there for clamping it up and it says as part of the maintenance that you loosen those screws then there's a c-spanner goes on there to crank that up and pull some tension onto the bearings however i tried that a while ago and i couldn't get this to move i couldn't get it to move to tighten it up so i left it because it didn't seem to it was it wasn't that sloppy just a bit noisy and it must be due some grease in those bearings so i left it and then as part of this when i decided to refurb i thought right i'll give it another go so i undid the screws and i loosened this and i've got this off down there i've not cleaned it up yet i will obviously clean all this up but this won't move so when i couldn't tighten it up before it was probably because this is seized up on the shaft and it's certainly I can't move it now, so that's more or less guaranteed that's what it is. So now I've got to try and get this off, which is going to take a bit of sorting out. I have put some uh, releasing fluid on here and, and left it overnight. And what I'm going to try and do now is drive something sharp down there. I don't want to be pulling on the outside of this because I don't want to shatter it. Um, so I've got to be very, very careful. Because I don't want to damage anything uh, and I don't want to go at it like an animal I've tried driving I'll put a piece of wood on there and hit it with a hammer 
and nothing happened and I've hit it with a large copper hammer and uh, nothing happened so like I say I'm trying it gently I could possibly wedge something in there but we'll see how it goes I'm, go I'm not going to film it I'm going to do it and then I'll tell you what I've done okay so I've got this one off and the way I did it was I started off with this little spike and gently poked it down the gap and it came off started to move quite easily actually but just a very very tight fit then I used this screwdriver which actually came with the lathe but nice and clean and then I cleaned this big screwdriver up and used that to ease the last bit off so now we've got to get this one off which I'm going to try the same thing I have a confession before we start I hate it when you watch a video and it talks about doing this and you get the impression that anybody could do it and then they end up using a specialised bit of kit and you realise you can't do it well before we go any further this is a puller and it's got a screw thread there then there's a hydraulic bit down the middle uh, and this comes from my father-in-law's old garage they used to have a body works and uh, light haulage I used to work for them um, a body works and a mechanical side and light haulage and it closed down years ago and this is that's where this came from and it's been sat under my bench doing nothing for years and years and I've used it to get one of these gears off so um apologize for that so i'm not going to sit here and say if i can do it anybody can do it but this was damn useful so i've managed to get that off and there's a big keyway then it looks very rough that does but my concern is that this shaft will not move it's not loose or very loose i'm going to give it a bit of a bash in a minute but so that first collar was fairly easy to get off but that gear was fixed and the pulley was fixed so that collar was tightening up against them two and not affecting the bearings or was it i mean according to the instructions you're supposed to be able to tension the bearings with the collar that's on that's on the outside well if that's solid and the gear's solid and that's solid it's not doing anything is it it hasn't been doing anything for years probably so here we are i've got it off now that collar was fairly loose this was a stay there i'll oh, knock it over obviously i got that off okay this was a bit of a pig um it does go on the keyway you can see it there so i did think i could try and get the key out but that wouldn't have happened uh, but that is what i used the puller for I was trying to get it off. I, first of all, to get that moving, I did the same. I used this spike, then the screwdriver. I just kept turning it round, and then another screwdriver, and then these two big screwdrivers. And by then, I'd got enough room behind it to get the puller legs in. So let's have a look at the main shaft. Right, here we are then. It's out. It's done, actually. To get it out was just ridiculously difficult. Loads and loads of blows with an old copper hammer on here to get it out because the other bearing, this one, was just so tight on there. It was unbelievable. But she's not now. Um, I've had to use, well I have used, I haven't had to, I could have sent it and had it ground, but I've used this flat wheel and I've gently done that and then I've polished it with the emery, you know, and got that down so that fits and then the same with that gear on there, that was very, very stiff on there. That was generally round the top, I haven't had to use the flat wheel, I've just polished it with the emery and got that on. So it all fits now, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and have a cup of tea and then I'm going to come back and clean that all completely, repack that with grease, smear it all with grease so it's 
protected and then do that one with grease and generally put it all back together which is a reverse process of the taking apart isn't it so we're nearly there um i had to fettle obviously that bearing to go on but i've also had to fit that collar because it was slightly sort of peened over on its edge and wouldn't go back on very well and i've also had to fit this gear not so much the gear more this great big long keyway uh, because the key was very stiff in the gear so i've had to file the keyway down and actually ground it down a little bit so i've had to fit that and fit that and fit that so we're nearly there i've just got to put the gear on now and then set the tension on the on the end so in conclusion would i recommend that you do this job well be prepared if you do so just a quick resume of the problems this pulley was stuck but not too bad we got that off okay the gear was seized onto the shaft the spacer wasn't too bad but the race of this first bearing was seized onto the shaft as well so the tensioning nut wasn't doing anything now my conclusion is that it was badly fitted in the first place the big long key keyway in there the key itself was show it was battered as i mentioned earlier so that wasn't handled very well and this spacer is showing signs of being bashed at one side so that was probably just bashed on there to make up the tension on the bearing when it was new before any engineers hit the keyboard if they haven't stopped the video and done so already what i should have done if i was going to do it absolutely properly was to first of all once i got the shaft out and realized what was going on i may be well i should have done i should have sent it to uh, get it ground on a cylindrical grinder like something like a jones and shipman 1074 uh, made in leicester yeah i know that because i used to work for them not as an engineer but i did anyway uh yeah to get that shaft all nicely polished and finished and down to size so that the bearing fit nicely and this gear would fit nicely but i couldn't do that hey I'd, well i wouldn't know where to go I, I don't think it's worth it and i've managed to do it myself the way i did it the way i showed and that's good enough for me to be honest but let's just establish before anybody hits the keyboard the proper way to do it i reckon would probably be to cylindrical dry so you know what i said to do that anyway the thing is i got it all moving i greased it all up and i've got the job done and when i've got it all back together i tensioned it up and i let it run at about 400 rpm for about 10 minutes it was a bit noisy for a start uh, but it's freed itself off i'll leave it running for a bit i'll do some test turns and then i'll uh, probably have a look at the tension again but at the minute that's done and i'm quite happy with it now now further to my video on refurbishing this lathe i set the tension on the bearings and then i went to do some parting off with my new parting off tool and it snapped the tip now i thought i'd set the bearings correctly and it's a bit ambiguous the instructions for setting them are a bit ambiguous and i tightened them up so i thought there was no play um and i didn't want to over tighten them so i was probably a bit scared of it but there was definitely no play and everything was turning fine it was just when i suppose the tension ramps up when you're parting off so having done that i then went back to the tension slackened it off and i just turned the tension up about quarter eighth to a quarter of a turn a bit more tension on the bearings and it made all the difference i'm now very very confident with me parting off and this tool works brilliantly so uh, this can serve as a postscript to both them videos i suppose But in the conclusion of the conclusion, would I recommend these machines to somebody else? Well, um, 
what I would recommend to somebody else who was thinking of buying one of these, a lathe like this, would be to look around the market. I assumed that Warco rebuilt these Chinese machines to a high standard, but I'm not so sure now. So having said that, I would check the opposition. Uh, the opposition, I think, is Axminster and Chester Machine Tools and anybody else. And have a look, because I saw an Axminster the other day, and this carriage, <coughs> excuse me, this carriage and the tailstock looked exactly the same, as if they'd come out of the same factory. So, let's presume they're all come out of the same factory. I would say... It's en my mate said it's engineering, rebuild it. En it's engineering, make one. If you're going to do engineering, then get the cheapest one of the specification you want and rebuild it. You're going to rebuild it anyway. Don't assume that Warco are perfect because they've been rebuilt. I thought that I'd paid extra to Warco to build this properly. Now I'm not so sure. As I say, if I was buying another one, I'd have a look at the opposition. I'd have a look what what Axminster were doing. I'd have a look at Chester and anybody else. And I'd see what they were doing at what price and assume that I'm going to rebuild it as soon as I get it. Okay, that's my opinion and I'm entitled to it. Thanks for watching.